Hello, my name is Isabella. I'm an 11 DP and I've been in the IB system for three months now. My plan is to make videos that might be helpful for some students who are interested in IB. So, what is IB? IB is one of the toughest curriculums in the world. IB wants its students to be thinkers, open-minded, and principled. It is a program that will teach you critical thinking and analytical skills that will help you in the future with universities after high school. Here are some benefits you will achieve by choosing IB based on the IB website. Number one, time management skills. Number two, academic ability. Number three, better research and writing skills since there are so many long assessments and essays that you're meant to write. And four, an international outlook. <laughs> But what is IB from a student's perspective? IB to me is an opportunity to study abroad, a curriculum that takes you out of your comfort zone and makes you try new, different things. A program that gives many opportunities for an easier future, but it needs hard work and discipline, and it is very challenging. Here's what some of my classmates said. So what's IB for you? IB for me is a very good opportunity to, I guess, change my life for the better. It is a very hard program. You have to study a very big amount, but I think it pays back in your future life, making university easier and the rest of your life as well. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, it makes me better than everybody else. When I complete this, I can flex on everybody. I will get any job I want. I will get any university I want. Oxford will be begging for me. Hello, my name is Isabella. I'm an 11 DP. And today I'm going to talk about the subjects and requirements in IB. First and foremost, there are six groups of subjects. Group one, mother tongues. If you're an international, you take English. If you're an Estonian, you take Estonian. It's as simple as that. Group two, foreign languages. This includes French, German, Russian, or Spanish. There are two levels, ab initio, which is the course for beginners, and language B, which is the course for students who have had previous knowledge in that language. Group three, social subjects, geography and history. Group four, experimental sciences. This includes physics, biology, or chemistry. Group five, maths. This is the only mandatory subject in IB. IB offers two courses of maths, Math AA, which stands for analysis and approaches. This focuses on developing your analytical skills, exploring topics such as calculus and algebra. And Math AI, which stands for Applications and Interpretations. It's about the use of math in real life. It focuses on concepts such as finance and statistics, and it's very useful to solve practical problems. And last but not least, Group 6, Visual Arts, which explores many different forms of arts. Out of the six subjects, you're required to pick 3HL and 3SL. What does this mean? SL stands for standard level and HL stands for higher level. In SL, you study the subjects regularly, but in HL, you take these subjects more in depth with deeper understanding and some extra topics. At the end of the year, you must pass an exam for each subject, except for visual arts, where you have other requirements such as a comparative study, a process portfolio, and an exhibition. But there are also two courses which everyone must take. These are CAS and TOK. So CAS which stands for Creativity, Activity, Service. Creativity, being creative, painting, drawing, playing a new instrument. Activity, being active, going for long walks, going to the gym, trying a new sport. And service, volunteering or helping out. This could be tutoring, or this could be helping out a friend studying, or it could be making informational videos like I'm doing. And the CAS project, which is organizing something that should take at least a month and should fall under two or more strands of CAS. CAS is one of those subjects which are great to have, to be more active and creative. But students, myself included, find it quite challenging. Out of the 18 months that you're required to do CAS, you have to do it every single week. And it's quite time consuming on top of all the other assessments and projects that you have to worry about. And TOK, which stands for Theory of Knowledge, and it's basically how we know what we know. TOK develops your critical thinking, and TOK's favorite question is, to what extent? The things I enjoy about the subjects in IB is that they're very personalized. For example, I don't like physics and chemistry, so I haven't chosen physics and chemistry, but I really enjoy biology, so I've chosen it as an HL subject, and therefore I can focus on the subjects that I enjoy much more. I hope this gave you some insight on the subjects in IB. Hello, it's me again, and today I'll be giving you tips that might help you through IB. IB may look like a tiresome program, and to be honest, 
It is. But if you're willing to study in an unfamiliar environment that's also hard and put yourself up for a challenge, then I think you can manage. So, how has it been? At first, I was very mentally drained and exhausted all the time. But I learned ways to be more productive and get all my work done on time, and I got the hang of it. Since a lot of the studying and revising will be done individually, you have to keep up with all the work you've been assigned to do. From my experience so far, it's quite fast-paced, meaning there's a lot of topics to learn in a short amount of time. So even if you miss a class or two, it's going to be very difficult for you to catch up. The advice that every teacher gives you to pass IB is to manage your time and not procrastinate. But that's so much easier said than done. I used to always say, I'll do it later, I'll do it when I get home, but then I never do. So here are my tips that I find very helpful. Study in environments that make you want to study. For me, I like to come to school earlier when I don't have any lessons to get all my work done, but maybe go to a library or a cafe, somewhere where you know you'll be productive. Write down reminders on calendars, on sticky notes, on your phone, or ask others to remind you. This is the tip that I find the most useful, studying with a group. It's beneficial in so many ways. You can bounce off each other's ideas, you can help each other when you don't understand, and in my opinion, I work much better with other people. The thing that will help you the most in IB is having a group you can rely on. At the end of the day, you guys will be classmates for two years, so you might as well make the most of it. When you sit down to study, have a plan. What you're going to get done, how long it's going to take. In the long run, if you have a plan, you get more work done, and it's more efficient. Since you can only pick six subjects, pick them wisely, or else you might regret it. I know some of my classmates have. So, what's your tip for IB? My tip is uh, to not be afraid to ask questions, because you never know. It might help you on the test. Thank you. So, my most important tip would be to take notes, especially with like TOK, like take notes on everything the teacher says, because the next lesson you will have, you will need all of those notes. And also during like exams, you will need them a lot. And then the second tip is to like learn how to manage your time because IB takes a lot of time out of your day. So you need to know how to also have fun and make sure that you have all of your homework and assignments done. So that will be my main tips. Yay, thank you. <laughs> During the first month of school, consider carefully your subject choices. And if you still want to change your subject, you can. Thank you. Hello, it's me again. Today I'll be interviewing some of my classmates. So how's IB been so far? Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely hard, but uh, so far I think I'm uh, managing pretty well. Uh, IB's been fun, uh, but also it's been a bit stressful with, uh, I guess, all of the studying. And then now during Christmas time, we have a bunch of tests. Yeah. So is the IB curriculum much harder than the Estonian one? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, uh, and I knew that as well uh, coming into the IB. Uh, because the Estonian curriculum was uh, not that hard for me. Uh, I knew that the IB was going to be a, a lot more challenging, and uh, it is. But at the same time, it is uh, motivating because, you know, you get to uh, choose your own subjects and you learn what you want to learn. But, yeah, the change is uh, definitely noticeable, and it is a lot harder. Thank you. So what's been the most difficult subject and why? So for me, the most difficult subject has been uh, mathematics, just because the pace is uh, like very fast. And if you miss one class, then you're basically behind by one topic and you need to study that at home. Thank you. Uh, for me, it's been uh, physics so far. Uh, I never really liked physics that much, but uh, that was what, I, what my options came down to in the end. And, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's been tough. I have to put in quite a lot of effort. Uh, I just think maybe the methods and uh, especially that the subject is in English and you know you have to relearn all the terms and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I think physics has been the most hard for me. Thank you. HLA math. It was and a huge mistake. Why? It's math, it's HL and it's AA. <laughs> What's been your favorite part about IB? Uh, definitely the free time. We get so many breaks. You can get done with all your work before the school day is even over. So everything after school is just free time. 
uh, also it gives me longer lunches. I can go outside, take walk. I can absolutely do anything. Like once everybody else is in class, like just better. So one of my favorite parts was the uh, uh, ability to choose the subjects that you want to take. So I don't have to take physics or chemistry if I don't want to. And then also I really like the, I guess, cohesive group that we have and the ability to do many group projects in classes. Thank you. Hello, it's Isabella. Today I'm going to show you what a day in school looks like for me. So first of all, I don't have my first two lessons in the day. So I've come to school and I'm going to study during those times before my actual lessons start. So the first two lessons were physics and since I don't take physics, I decided to come to school earlier to do a little bit of math and work on some visual arts. And as you can see, my study buddies also came to join me on this fine morning. So, us IB students have to switch from building to building, and right now, I have math and night to say. <laughs> Today in math, we did a worksheet on probability in Venn diagrams, and we also worked with tree diagrams. Yeah. We're about to have geography. <laughs> And in geography, we were doing a worksheet on albedo and positive and negative atmospheric feedbacks. And my last class of the day was biology, where we looked at effects of temperature on protein structure. Hello, it's me again. Today, the special video is going to be interviewing the teachers. Hello, my name is Aya. I teach French B in the IB diploma program. And this course is about, well, basically learning French in advanced level. So what makes IB teachers different than the Estonian curriculum ones? Well, first of all, IB teachers need to be very good communicators because they need to speak different languages and also different cultures. Maybe the second thing is that they need to be very open-minded as the students themselves uh, because you can be sure to have many different uh, students in your class from different countries. And the uh, third thing, what is most challenging, is you need to prepare much more for the lessons because it, they can be really, really fast. So how would you describe an IB student in five words? Well, the first word is uh, most definitely motivated because they know what they want. The uh, second one is open-minded because they already come from different cultures so they need to be open-minded and they want to learn so much. And then we have a uh, principle that goes with motivation of course, but well, okay. Um, they are mostly good communicators because they can't do without communication in French lessons for example. And um, fifth, I have found out that they can be very caring because they stick together. Thank you. Hello, my name is Irina and I'm teaching geography in IB diploma program. So have you taught any other curriculums apart from IB and how does it compare? Uh, yes, I've taught uh, in other schools uh, geography and biology in material, middle year, years program. Uh, not IB schools, but just uh, regular Estonian schools. And, well, uh, if I have to compare them, then IB is much, much more um, intensive, I would say so. Maybe that's the best word, so you have a lot of different work to do. But at the same time, it's very interesting. So uh, it piqued my curiosity in many different other topics that I didn't even know about. So, uh, yeah, I would say uh, if I had to choose, then I would stay with the IB program. So what's the best advice you have for students who are interested in joining IB? Uh, basically two things. First, be curious, uh, because you will be required to do a lot of different uh, works, uh, essays, uh, at the exams will be quite difficult. So the more you know, the more you're curious about the world, the easier it, the easier it will be for you. Uh, the second thing is be hardworking. So know how to plan your time, uh, just uh, study, prepare for everything you can. So yeah, hard work will pay off. Thank you. Hello, it's me again. This is part two of the teacher interviews. Hi. Uh, my name is Kirstin, uh, I am the biology teacher in IB Diploma program and I'm also the IBDP coordinator. How would you describe your teaching style? 
Um, I guess my teaching style is uh, focused on student engagement. Uh, I try to use different uh, methods, uh, be it uh, lectures, group tasks, uh, games, computer simulations, songs, dances, uh, and so on. Thank you. So how would you describe an IB student in five words? Mm, I think an IB student is a critical thinker, um, risk taker, um, adaptable, determined, and curious. Those are good. Those are good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jorgen and I'm teaching uh, DP chemistry and I also teach uh, uh, in the Estonian curriculum, uh, chemistry courses from 10th ten, to 12th grade. Uh, what's the best advice you have for students who would like to join IB? Be ready to study a lot, sacrifice your own free time, uh, be ready to be uh, independent. You need to do like a lot of independent work and uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes because you will learn by making mistakes and talk to people. That's, that's also important because uh, the more active you are, the more you ask from teachers, the more you discuss uh, the, uh, the uh, material with other students, the better you will be in the end. Thank you. So have you taught any other curriculums apart from IB and how does it compare? Uh, I'm teaching also uh, Estonian uh, curriculum uh, chemistry uh, from the 10th to 12th grade uh, and there are some significant differences. Uh, in DP chemistry you have a lot more choice than in Estonian curriculum. Uh, you can uh, choose to take DP chemistry at higher level which means you will have for two years uh, five chemistry lessons per week. Uh, you can take chemistry at standard level which means that you ha will have uh, three lessons per week chemistry for two years and you can choose to not take chemistry at all. In Estonian curriculum, uh, you have uh, three compulsory courses, which means on average one lesson per week for three years from 10th to 12th grade. Uh, well, but in our school, uh, the lessons are given in a more concentrated way. So we have for some short time periods, uh, five lessons per week and uh, for, mo for most of the time, no chemistry at all. Hello, today I'll be answering you guys' questions. This is also the last video in my series. So the first question is, are all the students internationals or can the Estonians also join? No, anyone can join. You just have to be determined and have good grades. My class is quite evenly distributed between internationals and Estonians. The second question is, what are some positive and negative things about IB? In my opinion, one positive thing can be that it helps so much with universities and how you can also choose your own subjects so it's much more personal and you can focus on what you enjoy and what you want to do in the future. But one negative thing could be about how much extra work there is to do. I mean, obviously there are end of year exams like the Estonians have to do, but there are also internal assessments and essays and exhibitions. It's a lot to manage and a lot to handle. Are the teachers good? I think the teachers are great. In the IB system, they're much more interested in student engagement and are super helpful whenever anybody has any sort of questions. How tough is the competition to get into IB? For the internationals, 10th grade is like a preparation for IB. We just have to pass end of year exams to get in, but the competition isn't too high since it's a guarantee that we're all gonna get in. But for the Estonians, from what I've heard, there is much more competition depending on how many applicants want to apply. I've heard that you have to get good grades in the subjects you choose, and the math grades especially. If a student is having problems in a subject, are they assigned a study group or a tutor? You can obviously form a study group amongst your classmates, which I find super helpful. But if you ask your teacher, they can give you extra lessons and consultations. There's also a possibility that you can ask other students to tutor you. Is it harder than you imagined? To be honest, not really, because I spoke to many of my friends who had graduated IB before me and they gave me all the tips and warned me about all the different subjects and assessments. So I'm grateful I got a heads up. But nonetheless, it's still very hard and sometimes I still can't even keep up with my work. Why did you decide to join IB? How has it been for you and do you regret anything about it? 
Uh, first and foremost, my choices of high school are quite limited, but I decided to join IB because I believe I can benefit from it in my future. Um, it's been stressful at times, but at other times really fun because of my class and my friends in my class. Um, I also enjoy the group work and the lab practicals that we do. And I have no regrets about IB, thankfully. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my series and I hope it gave you more insight to IB. Don't be afraid to ask the IB teachers if you have any more questions and you obviously can search on the IB website if you are intrigued in anything else.